I always say to start is that we have to understand what is the purpose for communication. And I always say the highest, uh, most impactful purpose for communication is, is to go on a truth journey, right? We're trying to figure out what the truth is. Mm. And that's why we're talking. That's why we're trying to connect. You've got a piece. I've got a piece, you know. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Ash One. Hey, it's lit. Thank you. Well, thank you. We love you. Um, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. I love this platform. I love what you're doing. Uh, my name is Tia Ramey. I'm a communication strategist that supports leaders. I help them both personally and professionally um, with their communication and how to connect with the people that they desire to influence. Uh, and so that's what I do. I've got a wide range of experience in this field, love marketing, love working with small business owners and entrepreneurs and people who are just seeking to build their American dream. That's amazing. Well, you hear that. All of us can use a page out of your book, communicating. This is what, like, I feel like everything is based on communication. And that's funny. Let's, let's start with that. So mm -hmm. that's funny that you mentioned communication because I was having a conversation with one of my friends today. And we were talking about just how relationships are these days that you have so many channels of communication but we still don't communicate properly yeah and then you have people in like india or in africa that have gets gets their wife set up and everything and they are in longer relationships and things like that so why mm -hmm. why do i guess the west maybe struggle with communication you think? Well, I think that um, I love communication. I love communication technology. But I have to be honest about um, some of the downfalls of communication technology is that it doesn't challenge us in our values to be as disciplined as we should be. You know, just for example, patience is a virtue, right? Um, and now we can connect in seconds. We can meet people in seconds. So we're not necessarily developing some of the virtues that we should have when we um, have to be patient, wait to talk, not interrupt, um, not be anxious. Um, whatever the character it is that you develop to keep yourself from when first, you know, just being rejected, um, appreciating people in your community, being kind, being polite, uh, those things take a lot more intent than they used to anymore. And so I think that our day to day interactions have taken a hit because of that. And so that's the training that I seek to provide is just how to instill those core values of, of respect and patience. Honor uh, is a big word you don't really hear anymore when just talking to a person one-on-one, -on -one, whether it is a spouse, someone you're intending to date, maybe it's a potential employer, um, and just making sure that you are really demonstrating what it is that you want people to know about you, and you're doing it in a way that is, is correct. And I think a lot of us need a little more help <laughs> with being intentional about that more than we probably used to. Wow, that's, when, I've never thought of communication in that way as, I mean, to have patience mm -hmm. to communicate. Yes. I mean, just think about it. Just like, you know, wow. I've never thought about it in that sense because so many, so many times a day where it's like, I'm moving, I'm moving, I'm moving. Mm -hmm. And we don't stop and just think like, you know, what, what just transpired? Like, what is yeah. this person? I guess they call it the third eye. Right. Is, that, is that when you develop the third eye? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, where I always say to start is that we have to understand what is the purpose for communication. And I always say the highest, uh, most impactful purpose for communication is, is to go on a truth journey, right? We're trying to figure out what the truth is. Mm. And that's why we're talking. That's why we're trying to connect. You've got a piece. I've got a piece. You know, can we put these pieces together and figure out where we fit into this landscape of life? And so if you can approach a discussion in that way, uh, then you have a the patience that you need to really hear someone out and to understand, you know, where they are in, in that. But unfortunately, we have a, a life here in the West that isn't based on truth. It's based on perception. Mm. And so that has a terrible impact <laughs> um, on some of our, lis our listening skills, first and foremost. And if you don't know how to listen, you definitely are not going to know how to talk um, to another person for the uh, intent of connecting and so even though I'm a part of this, right, this problem, I've been a social media strategist for the last 10 years. And when I first started this journey in social media, we never thought it was going to uh, create these sort of instincts in people. We didn't think it was going to change people the way that it has. So now I'm, I'm looking to provide that training to say, let's walk some of this back a bit and see if we can uh, untangle uh, what we've done <laughs> with, with creating these perceptions. Now can we be get back on a truth path and be patient with each other's process of trying to figure out what that looks like. Amazing, amazing. So how did you land 
to become a communication specialist? How? Tell us about that. You know what? It's so funny that you say that. I, I, maybe I didn't intend for this interview to be so deep. <laughs> Um, but I, I think that communication has always been something I've obsessed over. And I was an only child for the first 12 years of my life, spent okay. a lot of time alone. And when you are a kid in an adult world, you listen a lot. That's true. That is so true. <laughs> you too. have to. You, you are like, especially when you come from those core original backgrounds yes. and values that you speak about. So you, you have to. Almost. You have to listen. You know, that's that was kind of the place of kids to be seen and not heard. And. Um, you hear all of these adults talking or you hear them arguing or, con or they're dealing with conflict, whether it's your parents and their siblings or maybe your parents are married, you hear those sort of things. And so I've, I listened and obsessed on where communication would break down all the time and say, oh man, if this person could just hear this person a little bit better, um, then they wouldn't be arguing. I had a lot of time to sit with that. And so, and I loved commercials. When I was a kid, you know, everyone had a jingle. Everyone had, you know, these cute little taglines. I used to think it was so brilliant. You hear the best part of waking up is Folgers in your cup. I'm like, wow, that is so brilliant. Yes. You know, or the, uh, every kiss begins with K. Amazing. You know, I used to just love the way someone could take words and develop art all the way down to music. Music is one of my favorite forms of art. My, my uh, background is actually in arts. I went to CCAD and I have a degree in, in fine arts. But I just, I love that. And so it became my art and my science, my life. And um, I'm an author. I wrote a book about communication. It's called yes. Canceled, Mastering Difficult Conversations in a Modern World. And it's just all the trends and patterns that I've watched. And even as a social media strategist who specialize in outreach initiatives, which means I've had to facilitate some really tough conversations wow. online. Yeah. And so I tracked a pattern for where those things break down and develop some predictive analysis on how people process those discussions. Uh, so it, it just continued. It's, it's just been a part of me since I was a child. So, so what was your jingle? What was, the, what was that <laughs> jingle for you that kind of motivated you or it kind of, you know, you related to? And I'll tell you what mine was, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, my jingle was America Run on Duncan. Say that again? America runs on Duncan. America runs on Duncan. Because I was I'm always smart. early up, and you always hear those commercials, America runs on Duncan. And it was just like, okay. But to me, it meant so much more than just America run on Duncan, because you, you had to be up early to yeah. hear that. And if you was up early, that means you was getting so much stuff done. You know, mm -hmm. you had so much more time. So that was my jingle for me. That was what kept me moving and stuff like that. What was yours? Oh, you know what? I can tell you what mine is now, and it's okay. more of a catchphrase that I hear. It's my favorite one in the world. My husband laughs at me every time I say it, but it's Captain America. He says it all the time. I could do this all day. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That's can, me. Okay. That I is can do me. This I'm a workaholic. You know, I, I work very hard, and um, I always say that there's a difference between a job and a career, and if you have a job, you're doing something. You're getting paid to do something you wouldn't otherwise do, but when you have a career, you're getting paid to be who you are, and so for me, I could do this all day. <laughs> I could do this all funny. day. Let's get. I like that one. That's, that's my awesome, favorite. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Oh, one thing you you mentioned mm -hmm. and it's so important in the community, um, being able to bridge gaps. Yes. And being able to reach teenagers and have those tough conversation. Mm -hmm. um, what was, what was that conversation like when you like you say you dealt with some or some? What are some of those conversations like? And what are the highlights that you may want? Um, us to take from it when we're communicating online mm -hmm. via being uh, bullying or um, anything that has to do with the, the teens. You know, with, my, with teenagers, they have their own language. Um, okay. And I think that that's the important part that we have to, to really make sure that we're paying attention to. And I say there's these languages that we're developing now, and they're going to continue to expand and develop as even our diversity initiatives are expanding. Um, and taking the time to understand that that someone may not be speaking in your language can really help you to gauge how you should react or respond to what it is they say. You know, in the same regard, like if I was standing here, I'm speaking English and someone else was speaking French, I wouldn't continue to speak English assuming mm. they understand me. I'm going to yeah. listen a little bit, I'm going to look for cues, I'm going to adjust my language, and we're going to go on a journey to figure out how we can understand each other a little bit better. And so my hope is that one day we can recognize that because Teenagers have their own language, and one of those languages I like to call it a youth language, and mostly because they have um, a deep sense of duty to their youth and to their personal interests, 
and their personal happiness. That's usually what the, the place young people are coming from, right? Okay. And then you get older and that sense of duty changes and it just and expands. But when you're young, you want to be happy. You yeah. want to have fun. You want to have a good time. Um, and then you get older, you may develop a family language. Or if you are a person of faith, you have a language that is rooted in that. And so when you're talking to young people, you have to remember that that is their motivation, right? And though we try to instill those deep senses of duty in other things, they're not there yet. So you have to relate to them where they are okay. um, and then help to pull them in. And I've noticed that because, like I said, I was a, an only child for a long time. My siblings and I are all in different generations. Yeah. My brother was born in the 90s. I was born in the 80s. My sister was born in the 2000s. You know, she's 19 years old. So learning how to talk to her and connect with her had been quite the challenge, and she's pushed me um, a, a lot. And so now when I approach her, I'm looking for the areas of her life where she is most interested, and I'm bringing my points to her level mm. instead of trying to pull her into mine. And that's so important. That's so important, mm -hmm. being able to connect with with your siblings that yes. way because you don't want sibling rivalry, of course. Right. So <laughs> when you went, what I, what I realize is when you have a, a share experience mm -hmm. or when you, like you said, you don't want to bring her into what you have going on. You want right. to take you and, you know, see what she got going on so that way we can communicate because you are the older than her so you know right. I, it could be so tough i have a younger brother and sometimes i struggle so that's definitely true so i have to get better in that area because sometimes i'm like just do it you know what to do right so you know but that's just yeah. me being a man man has a different touch when it comes to like you know in a woman's approach mm -hmm. um that actually leads us right into our next thing so for any young lady who's here um watching you Mm -hmm. And what would you want to tell them, um, let's say from that 8 to 17 years old, just what's that motivation, what's that word of encouragement you may have for them? Um, I would tell them to not compare themselves. You know, really try very hard as young as you can to really embrace yourself where you are and be patient with your process of growth. I think that's another issue that I see in, in technology now is that we have so many windows into each other's lives. And so there's so many different people that we get a chance to compare ourselves to mm. without even thinking about what's real and what isn't. You know, um, we didn't have filters when I was younger. We didn't have all of these different things that allows people to fabricate a life uh, that isn't real. And so I, I get concerned, you know, for our young ladies because it was already hard enough um, when you had television to compare yourself in magazines. Now there's so much more mm. um, and so many more reasons. So I want them to know that um, feeling bad about themselves is a business, you know, and there's, it's a multi-billion dollar business for which so many oh. people profit off of you not accepting yourself or how you look and who you are in your life and, and where you are right now. Um, it's not, it, it, you don't need to take that in. You know, the people make a lot of money off of you feeling that way. So I just want to empower them to uh, embrace themselves and to love their lives and to find things about their life right now that they can be grateful for. Look and see what's in their hand. They're special right now, just as they are. They've got talent, gifts, skills, some of them for which they haven't even discovered yet. So just be patient. Be patient with your process and you'll figure it out. Awesome. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful message. Yes, be patient. And she said something that's important. I hope y'all caught it. Don't miss that message. She said that you not loving yourself is a business. It's a business. So you have to pay attention to that. You have to love yourself before you can even love others. That's like the foundation of, you know, just being a good person. So, yes. Um, well, thank you for that. Um, what I want to touch on now are some of your agendas you have going on. Sure. Um, Let's talk, let's talk about Michelle campaign and she's she's our representative on the east side, right? Yeah. 19th yeah. district if I'm It'll be um actually Senate District 3. District 3, yeah, mm -hmm. District 3. Okay. Yep. So I've got a chance to meet Michelle several times. She mm -hmm. I've seen her speak. She's an awesome speaker. Michelle, mm -hmm. I love you. You have my vote. Um let's let's um, let's talk about the campaign a little bit. Let's talk yeah. about Michelle as a whole. Well, you know what? Um I've, I've worked with Michelle Reynolds since 2014, and I started off as just being, you know, her uh, social media manager, and we have expanded. We went to the governor's office of faith-based and community initiatives together, and now I'm managing her campaign. She's running for um, state senate for District 3, uh, and so she is she's one of those people, and I don't say this about anyone, 
but she's one of those people that's just a true leader to her core. Okay. And I always yeah. say she has the Midas touch. Whatever she touches, it just turns to gold. She's got the heart of a servant. And it's not because she leads, you know, from standing over people. She gets down in the trenches with them, and she does the work. And, um, and she just has this beautiful way of, of pulling people together and bringing people up and taking them with her. And her entire ministry, I would say, is one of second chances. You know, she has... Um, She's been an entrepreneur that developed a business that provided housing to second chance citizens, wow. you know, to reduce recidivism. And so she's very patient with people and she's the person who's lived and seen the miracle over and over again of what it looks like when you give people another chance and you give them the right resources to start um, their lives over and to do it right this time. And she's been a part of that success you know, hundreds and hundreds of times over. So I appreciate that because I'll be honest, I'm not the most forgiving person naturally. That was not a natural instinct for me. I'm very black and white, but being around leaders like her has really taught me a lot about compassion. It's taught me a lot about being results driven. It's taught me a lot about not giving up on people. And it's taught me a lot about um, not being afraid to do the hard work and lead from the front. So I really appreciate her leadership. And that's why I've I've been managing her campaign, and I've been learning from her since uh, since I started my business back in 2013. That's awesome. And like I said, I, I was just, I was thrilled to meet her when I did meet her. Oh, my God. She worked very closely with mm -hmm. uh, with LICI. And yes. And so I've seen her speak on several occasions. Um, thank you. And what's, what I really appreciate about uh, Michelle Reynolds is the fact that she's in my district mm -hmm. and when i say my district that's like my area where i grew up at um district three off of hamilton road mm -hmm. east side columbus um so it's a lot of good things happening here and it's so important that we have a representation especially like her yes. because growing up i think the last person that i did see like michelle was um was gene harris I don't know if you know Jane mm -hmm. Harris or remember Jane mm -hmm. Harris. Yeah, yeah, that was like the, you know, that was the sister when I was in school and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's good to see we're out here. And thank you for what you're doing. Um, next thing I want to kind of get into before we touch on that, that big subject is just um, let's just talk about communi being a communication specialist and yes. what agenda you may have, especially, you know, right now, things that you're doing. Yeah, um, so right now I have a YouTube channel where I provide free communication training to leaders um, personally and professionally. I, like I said, I have a book. I'm an author. I even did a book for um, specific to relationships because just because you're a leader on the clock doesn't mean you're not one off the clock. You don't turn leadership off. You just don't. And so what I wanted to have lead, help leaders do is to not just help them with their businesses, but to also help them with their personal lives, their marriages, the relationships, and the people they want to connect with. So I've got a couple books out. It's on my website, tiaramey.com, and I'm spending a lot of time now in businesses helping um, teams learn how to communicate with one another because this marketing technology and communication technology thing, I think if, you have, if you've worked in any office, you know that there's so many different ways to communicate. I mean, you're talking about text, email, project management systems, instant messengers, you know, you name it. Everyone has a process, the way that they like to connect and communicate, and then on top of that, um, just tones, personalities, like there's so many things that can get missed in the crossfire um, that can really, you know, cause a high churn where you're losing employees because they don't communicate the way you do. So I like to come in and help people understand each other and build an equitable system for how they're going to communicate based on data. I love data. <laughs> but and you have to move. You, have to. you have to be data driven. You have, you have to. to. You have Especially to in my driven. industry. My industry yeah. is marketing. So that's where business meets art you know we get a chance to measure the impact of our artwork and make sure that it's working so i bring that with me into my communication training and we we look at the data the makeup of the team and then we we have everyone to buy in on putting together that system that works for everyone so they can move their deliverables efficiently awesome so when when are these train when do you host these trainings are these sessions yes yeah, so actually um all my tr my free trainings are on my youtube channel but my um companies they request me to come in and so I've been to um, a few colleges, I've been to uh, some nonprofit organizations, and that's always interesting because mostly when they have communication gaps, it's normally a faith-based organization that is struggling to communicate with the people they intend to serve. Um, mm. and, it's, and it's amazing that if you are hungry, right, let's say you're that person that needs to come in the doors of a food pantry, you're hungry, 
But if that, those lay people do not know how to communicate with you, they offend them, they would rather be hungry than to walk through those doors. And these are the challenges that nonprofit organizations are facing. They're like, we have to learn how to communicate with people or we're, going, we're not going to be able to help them. And then some of the corporations and their side is usually within teams where, and I think everyone has felt this before, it's probably made all of us an entrepreneur one way or another where the manager is a bad communicator. <laughs> That's the worst, you know, ain't it? It's the worst. That's the thing. worst. Or there's the leadership. It's like if you it's have, it, you know, it starts from like people say it starts from the top down, and it really does mm -hmm. because if you have a terrible leader, yep. the organization itself is just going to be terrible. So that's very important. That is so true. It's so true. Yeah. I worked in wireless, and um, I used to think that the middle management was just terrible to us. And then I listened to the call of their superiors and they were horrible to them. And I'm like, wow, this is really it's trickling, trickling down. down. Wow. Um, you know, it, it's, it's amazing. So that's, you know, that's been my goal is to help bridge those gaps and okay. help people understand how to do let better. Me, let me ask you of a challenge that you face mm -hmm. in the, um, you know, in trying to bridge a gap, like a, like a direct yep. challenge that maybe you want to you know, other people in your field mm -hmm. may, may even experience this challenge. You may want to share a light on it. Yeah, so um, I, I would probably say some of the top challenges right now are, especially when you're working in crisis, right? Let's say, for example, and I have to be vague because when you work in crisis, you have to be private about your clientele. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, but you may have a CEO, for example, who said something on social media that offended people and it's time for them to clean it up and that's usually where they have to hire someone like me to support them on the social media side and a PR person to help them out on that side. The hardest thing to help people manage and, and I think that they should practice this in their personal lives is first um, speaking to understand and then be understood and that's always the hardest thing. Usually everyone wants to be understood first especially if you said something that was offensive that you don't understand why it's offensive they tend to dig themselves in a bigger hole the more they try to make people understand them mm. <laughs> versus taking the time, <laughs> taking a pause, listening, allowing us to now craft a, uh, craft a response that is intuitive, that is compassionate, um, is to get them to kind of be quiet for a while. <laughs> so for a little while, right? <laughs> for a little okay. while. For like, sure. Listen, I can see. That, that's important. That's very important. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Now, I wanted to touch on the book, but you've touched on it in various forms. Sure. So I kind of want to ask a different question. Okay. I want to ask for a reader, mm -hmm. what's that message um, that you want them to leave with um, in your book? I want people to expand their capacity for honest dialogue. Okay. That is the message. It is a message about truth. It is a message about how to hear the truth and it is a message about how to speak the truth responsibly. That's that's it. That <laughs> hey, you got yeah, that she that's why she's a communication. That was clear, concise, and to the point. And I'm gonna I'm gonna hop in here with you. Okay. And we're gonna do a couple more. All right. Awesome. Thanks. We are back. If you haven't already, go ahead and share, subscribe, like, comment if you like the content we've been putting out. Again, shout out to Smith Francois. We are at the Haitian headquarters. Um, guys, come and see us. Um, I'm with Tia again. It's always a pleasure. Likewise. Um, we have a few, um, we have a few, I guess, sections of the interview that we do. Mm -hmm. One is called What's Your Mud? Mm -hmm. So I can start with What's My Mud? So my mud, I told you, Dixie Three. Well, I'm from Liberia, West mm -hmm. Africa, and I came here, lived on the east side of Columbus, mm -hmm. went to Warner Ridge, you know, um, worked at Fort Rapids. I'm like going all the way back down, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, are you from Columbus? I am. You from Columbus? So, yep. okay. So, you know, you remember Media Play? Yep. So, I, I bought my first software from Media Play, you know. So, anyway, but East South Columbus is definitely my mud. And and really, my mud is, is the young black man. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to see us do well. I feel like there's a lot of programs out here for the girls, mm -hmm. which is good. Yeah. I love it. And I see them thriving. You see women. And I, I was telling Smith the other day. Whenever I'm watching the news and I see representation of a country like, you know, it's always a woman. And I'm so happy for that. And I'm looking yeah. like, but I'm looking at my brothers and I'm like, look, guys, we have to continue to lead. Mm -hmm. You know, this is our natural role. And my bottom line, what we do on anything is just to, you know, continue yeah. pushing for that conversation to for them to get better, get a little more 
for us yes. to, to get better, for us to get a little more seasoned, for us to be a little more driven and, and what does it look like? What does it feel like? And, mm -hmm. and again, getting the clear communication because sometimes I have a brother, he may not listen to me, he may listen to somebody else. So it's like getting that message to whoever I think he may listen to yeah. or other young people have influence or you may have influence. So that's what we do here. So that's, that's my I mud. I love that. Yeah, so what's your mud? My mud, three words, faith, family, and business. Faith, family, uh, and business. Faith, family, and business. You know, I am from Columbus, Ohio, born and raised. I went to Beechcroft High School. Beechcroft, okay. Um, but I'm actually from the east side, so I got to go to Beechcroft because of the lottery programs okay, yeah. uh, that were happening. My home school would have been Marion Franklin at the time. Okay, so. I've lived all over the east side of Columbus, uh, well, and the north side, too. Lived in Linda McKinley area. That's where my family is from. Okay. Um, the Linda area is getting better. It's getting better. Yeah, I'm glad is. to see Can't the really investment yeah. they've made. And my grandfather still lives right next door to Linda McKinley High School. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Right next door. Side so. Linda McKinley, Linda area, you know. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Been Just been around it. I think I, I said I've lived in probably every hood except for the west side. Okay. We don't go there. East siders don't go <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, whenever I get out west, I'm like, hold on. Where am I at? Yeah. Right. So I, I can relate to that. It's like, yes. especially hitting the outer belt. Yeah. I'm like, I was telling Smith the other day, whenever I get here, I'm like, whoa, I'm out the way already. Yeah, so, but yeah, so faith, family, and business. Yes. Yes, that's that's amazing. Um, another thing is, why Columbus? Why, why are you, why, I guess why we're still here, mm -hmm. or why, you know, why Columbus? I, I love Columbus. I gen One, I'm a very proud Buckeye. Go I Bucks. Really am. That's Go right. Bucks. Football season's coming up. <laughs> <laughs> the best time of the year. Yes. It's my favorite time. But I love my city. I love um, the possibilities here. I love that, you know, for a long time it was ran by a black mayor. Yeah, um, yeah. Which was great that I got a chance to grow up in seeing black leadership. And most of my career, I've always had black leaders that have hired me and given me jobs, given me opportunities. I've worked in some great black owned companies. That's my journey, you know, it's, it really is my story and my history is uh, just the impact of the might of black businesses and, and um, business people who come together and make sure we each other gets fed. So yes. sometimes people would say stereotypes that we don't collaborate. They say that, you know, we're not good to each other. That has not been my experience. And that's not true. Know? It's um, and again, we have to we, language is important. Yes. You yes. can't take the small number and right. blow it all the way up because there's a lot of. You know, a lot of us, a lot of black people are doing so well. And, I, yes. and my mom used to tell me all the time, when you come to America, it's because I'm African, so you come to America, there's two ways to go. You can sag your pants or you can wear a suit. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it is. You can either stray the right way or you can stray the wrong way. And it's up to us leaders it's up to, to us. continue okay. working. And another thing I really, really tell people all the time, as a leader, your job don't stop. Mm -hmm. Your job don't stop. If you see... A, a, a little girl or a little boy, they're acting up. That's a cry for help. Yeah. You have to be willing to fight for them. You have to be willing to do that. And then don't say, don't. I, I don't like when people are like, oh, I tried everything. I've tried it all. No, you haven't. You, you haven't got across yet. You have to, you know, get that breakthrough before you can. And we need to yeah. more and more leaders to just like you said, pray for patience. Listen, mm -hmm. not bring them into your world. Right. Go in their world. Like, just this interview, I've learned a few more, and I learned so much from you. At the um, the Tink Tank. Oh, man. Putting my phone off. Wish I should have did that <laughs> earlier, guys. <laughs> Turn my phone <laughs> off. Get on social media. This, you have such a lot of good points. And I want to tell you personally, I thank you for your time. And I want you to continue going. And we, we're we here. Ask when we're here. Whenever you want to make any media announcements. You want us to share anything. Awesome. We believe in you. We're here for any campaign. You know, this is what this platform is for to push us and to push that narrative further. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for having me. This was this was amazing. Yeah, thank Always. you. Always. Thank you.